Hello everybody and welcome. In this video we're going to go ahead and make something like the cube we have in front of us here. And the purpose of this very basic cube is we actually only write down the add cube command once. The rest is all made from nested for loops. If you know how to do this already, I challenge you. For the rest of us, let's crack on. Before we actually dive into the code, let's make sure we've got everything that we need to get going. I'm going to delete my default cube for the moment and add one back in again. Go ahead and copy this tiny bit of code at the bottom, create a new text file. We don't need the alignment and whether or not it's entering edit mode. And we've got these two parameters here. Let's make this larger so everybody can see. We have um, our size, which we want to hard code as one for the moment. You can always uh, take that out of the code later on if you wanted to. And we've got its location. Now, before we do anything else, I want to make sure um, we don't do what we did in the last video with setting this X, Y, and Z. We've actually, that's a vector, and we can use a built-in library. In fact, if we have a look over here at the console itself, we already have some of these imported. So we will import BPY, that is important. So let's go ahead and do that straight away. The setup is always important, otherwise something won't work. And math utilities is something that we can use and use a vector from. But we don't need to import the entire math utilities library in order to do this. So we're going to import, but from that library, something very specific. So we can go from math utilities or math utils, U-T-I-L-S, like that. We're going to import a vector. Now this is important because then our types are all matched up and it's much, much cleaner. So let's have a quick look over in the Python console itself. If we were to go BPY, oh, making sure that our cursor's over here, BPY dot data dot objects, yep. And then if we press tab again for the autocomplete, we can see the three objects that are in the scene. I want cube in this case. If I press enter, we can see it's there. Perfect. If we go dot location, what we get returned is a vector. And that's what we want to use instead of making an X, Y, and Z. How do we do that? Well, let's call it a position. Or we could call it pos for short. It's entirely up to you. And we're going to have it equal a vector. And if you have a look at the syntax down here, there are two parentheses either side. So make sure that that is the case. And this will be very similar as we had before. X, Y, and Z. There we go. So we've got now a vector that we can plug straight into the location. So let's drag this back so you can see everything. So the click... The location is not going to be like this anymore. It's just going to be our position. Now, let's make sure we can test that. I'm going to delete everything from my scene and press play. And we've got a cube that lines up with the grid in our world. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to see. Now we need to repeat it using a for in range loop. Now we've not set the size of how far we want to go. So we could call it size. I'm going to call it base in this particular case. And I'm going to stick with four for the moment. Be relatively quick even for basic computers. If you whack that number up, it gets exponential on each for loop that we end up creating. And of course, that will make Blender potentially look like it's locked up while it does those calculations. Okay, so let's get on with our loop. So we're going to say four. I'm going to call these x cubes. Um, maybe x cube because it's just one going in. But for our x cube, so it's clear what we're doing. In range of the base. Remember your semicolon there. And remember you need this indentation. That is very important. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a cube, which is that bit of code there. And then we need to increment. If we just go ahead and run this now for testing, we should get four cubes, which we do. Perfect. Um, just going to delete everything there. So we need to increment the x value. How do we go ahead and get that? Well, that will be pos.x. That's a built-in way of accessing the first part of this vector, x, y, and z. Now, it's because it's a vector that we can access it in that way. So now if we go plus equals one, what we should get, if I save my work, and saving's very important, um, got the file I want to overwrite there, loops. Now, if I press play, we get four. Brilliant. So we've got to the stage that we made in the last uh, video, but this time with much better code. 
The next thing we want to do is nest a loop. We can do that manually first, and that gives us a better idea that we're going in the right direction, especially with loops. If you're new to loops, it's very easy to crash your computer by making an infinite one. So let's test that this works first. What do we want to do? We want to reset the X position, and we cannot do that um, straight away. There are a couple of ways that we could do it. We could derive its initial position based upon how many times we've actually incremented it, or we could just store it in the first place. So how about init underscore X, the initial X position, um, set that equal to pause at this level uh, dot X. And we're going to need to do it for the Y in a bit as well. So we might as well get that sorted equals pause dot Y. OK, so we've got all of our variables that we need stored at the top here. Now we can go ahead and set the X position. So pause dot X is now going to be set back to the initial X. Let's press play. Oh, no, oh, no, too quick. <laughs> OK, let's delete those for a moment. Indentation, as I mentioned earlier, is important. So we want to increment X and then we want to reset the X, but we want to do that on a new line. If we don't do it on a new line, we're moving X and then resetting it back again, which is just silly. Sounds like something I would do. Let's press play. That's now working as expected. We've reset and then we can do the same thing again after incrementing the Y position. So this is where we go pause dot Y plus equals one. So we're moving that Y position one and then we repeat this once again. And of course, we don't want to continually repeat this. We want to use a for loop. There we go. So what we want to do works absolutely fine. So we don't need this last bit of code between 15 and 18 there, but we do need the rest. And all of this will need to be indented because it's going to be inside a new loop. So it's going to be nested within another for loop. Let's give ourselves a bit of space and go for, in this case, it's going to be the Y cubes in range and because we're doing a square base it was still going to use the same number as before we're going to do this so let's work from the inside out it's a good way of working with loops here we have a for loop that's going to create a row of cubes we know that works then after it's done that it's going to reset the x position and increment the y position and then it's going to do the same thing again four times because that's what the this next loop that it's nested within will do. Let's delete everything in our scene and press play. Boom, got it. Perfect. Now, a little challenge for you if you want is to go ahead and make it so it's four high. And I will crack on with that now because it's going to be exactly the same code, but a few changes. So here we're going to go for, in this case, I'm going to call it Z cubes to make sure I'm consistent in range and then a base again. And then finally, and the indentation here is important, we're going to reset the Y position and increment the Z. So pos.y is going to be equal to the initial Y position. You can use tab to autocomplete. And then I'm going to go position.z plus equals one. Cross your fingers. Let's remove everything from our scene. Press play. Uh-oh, something went wrong. Um, I've put the equals and plus sign the other way around. Now, they roughly mean the same thing, but not in this particular case. So it needs to be plus equals. Let's go ahead and delete everything from here. And there we go. Phew. I thought it was something as simple and straightforward as that. Right. Perfect. And we've got ourselves what you might consider a brick wall. So you can now add physics to all of these objects and blow them apart. You can actually make a brick wall if you were to stretch some of those cubes out to be slightly longer along one axis, that would then create a brick wall. So this is really foundational stuff that you can build upon, which is great. That's exactly what you need when you're first starting out in Python. OK, so that's it for this video. We've managed to create ourselves a nice little cube. One thing I will show you is the exponential nature of this. If I was to set this to, no, not 109, uh, we were to set that to 10. Delete everything from the scene and press play. 
do be uh, aware that Blender now has essentially locked up whilst it calculates whatever's going on in the background. And that's because it's effectively adding in a thousand cubes. That is a lot. We got 10 by 10 by 10. And Blender will take a while to do that. So just like infinite loops, you've also got to be careful about how many iterations you are actually going to go through with that type of code. And then just one magic number change here. I don't know if you've ever played with the sapling add-on. That's one of the, you know, that's very similar to what can happen there where you're branching out and you've got multiples going on. You can increment a number just by one and it end up taking so much longer than it would have done before. So that's it. If you've liked the video, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe so you can see the upcoming videos as well. If you've got a comment on either the code or what you've done with this, that would be awesome to share it with me. Hit me up down below and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.